Hello everyone, I'm Chao. I'm a engineer manager at Grab Trust Team. And I'm also speaking with Aran, who will speak a little bit later. Um, I'm excited to share with all of you about how we use CLA to help us solve multiple business challenges in a large scale. What we're going to cover today will be the points below. And uh, Aran will also cover more use cases on optimization and how Grab is using CLAD. So about who we are, um, Grab is, is the Southeast Asia's largest mobile technology company that connects millions of customers to millions of drivers, merchandise, and businesses. Currently, Grab covers 339 cities in eight countries and 187 million active users. What is this means to the engineering team? Well, it is the scale that the infrastructure have to deal with on every transaction. Grab's mission is to drive in Southeast Asia forward by improving the quality of life for everyone. And it offers everyday services like transport, food, delivery, payment, and financial services. Those diversity of services brings a different aspect to the engineering team, which is how to develop a platform-like solution so that they can fit to multiple business verticals with the least engineering cost and the shortest dive cycle. So our team's mission is to protect the users and enhance the trust in Grab ecosystem. We have a real-time pipeline that is complemented by online data processing for conducting checks and computing verdicts that are used for treatments. Real-time counters are used for calculating real-time verdicts, some of which are policy enforcement, others are velocity rules, verdicts based on the past behaviors. <laughs> Here is a counter example. Say numbers of rides a passenger completes within X hours, or volume of the decline transactions a passenger driver pair within X hours. We use many types of counters to detect potential risks. For example, if a passenger A and driver B together take more than 10 rides in last an hour, then it is very suspicious. We may take some actions for further rides. The conventional methods are online big data process and also data analytics and uh, engineers work on the scripts. So there will be a bottleneck. So it's not in real time and it, real time is important to us. Also, there will be a long dive life cycle for production. Also, the challenges we have are scalability. It's a great challenge to store the counters in the database and query and aggregate them in real time. When there are millions of counters keys across a long period of time, we have to find a scalable way to write and fetch keys efficiently and meet our SLA. And second is self-serving. A counter is usually invented by data team and used online by engineers. It usually takes two or more weeks for the whole coding or dev iteration. And if there's any changes in the middle, which happens quite often, the situation would loop again. The third one is manageable and uh, um, extendable, which improves of connection between real-time and offline data. With a new solution, the users can get a view of what is stored in the counters and their performance for the future analytics. Here's a workflow. On the left side is the counter creation workflow. User opens the counter creation UI and configure new counter definitions. And the service monitor the new counter creation, puts a new counter into low script process and start processing new counter events. And the counter service monitor multiple streams as ingress, assembles actual data from online data services so that rich data set will be also available for counter creators to stream resource. The kind of processor evaluates the user configured expression, which uses the direct injection of script plugin, and also writes the um, evaluate values to the delicate stream. So it's not necessary to redeploy the counter definition logic to the counter processor. And the read process is uh, rather straightforward. Um, the upstream services use RPC request and the service query from the CLADB concurrently. So here's the data structure we use to tackle the scalability and SLA requirement. 
We save the aggregate value in the time window instead of the transactions. We save the aggregate values to the time buckets. So there are limited windows to aggregate for each query in that case, and we avoid doing heavy aggregations, but still keep the granularity in 15 minutes level in a scalable respons responsible time. Here is a typical query in our use case. Example, we want to know how many rides passenger one have done from last three hours to now. And since on the writing process, all buckets keep receiving the records simultaneously, we can easily take those records out of the 15 minutes and hour tables and add values as the results. So that's the short intro on the trust side. I will hand it over to Arun for more interesting use cases. Thank you, Chav. That's about how we use line fraud detection to continuously analyze and monitor the streams for detecting any fraudulent transactions. Now, I'm going to briefly talk about some of our other use cases that uses Scylla as the distributed data store and talk a little about the optimizations that we have done to improve the latencies and to reduce cost. Ads. Scylla supports logging every user event with respect to clicks and the impressions that usually get created when a user see the ad and also supports frequency capping. We do store all the statistics to basically improve our ads further. Kairos, it's a distributed time series scalable database, uses Scylla as the backend storage to store the metrics data. And here is how we use it. We have a pipeline that reads data from Kafka and uses Kairos ingestors to write it to Kairos and then to Scylla. Stream processing. This is a framework built on event sourcing architectural pattern that supports real-time data processing and process time series data for millions of transactions. And this also does data streaming with Apache Kafka. We use Scylla here as a persistent storage to process any stateful transformations like aggregations, joins, and windowing. There are hundreds of pipelines created that can process both stateful and stateless transformations depending on what our customers are looking for. And this platform is currently built to scale and service billions of events per day. There, there would be some of our real-time services who would be interested with the stream aggregated output, which would use our GrabStat service to interact with the Scylla DB. And Fraud detection is one of the service which does make gRPC calls to grab stats in order to interact with the database. Segmentation platform. This is an experimentation platform that is widely used across Graph for various use cases, like to run experiments on targeted segments or to issue driver loyalty rewards or incentives based on some commissions to drivers or just simply to create, run, and then publish the promotion in this platform. And also does uh, eligibility check of a user while applying the promotion in real time. Some of the other features this platform provides are to target ads and then campaigns, and uses machine learning models for promo recommendations. The last is with real time chart service that uses this platform to target wide range of customers for any communication. Front end. This is the interface that the team developed in order to create, delete, and refresh the segments from this interface and also used to schedule jobs for any segment creation. And some of the other features that this provides is to do a passenger lookup in a segment. For example, if someone want to just see if a passenger is part of a given segment, they can just do a simple lookup here. Here is the architecture of segmentation platform and how different components are talking to each other. Uh, with Presto acting as a query engine and Spark, which does process the scheduled jobs and Elastic for use for lookups and Kafka to which we publish the messages to and Scylla as the data store. Okay, let's take an example of what happens when a passenger wants to book a ride using promotion. Imagine the user would log into the app, updates the location information, and now applies the promotion. 
Now, what happens in the background is it does trigger a call to our service, which does an eligibility check to make sure that the right passenger is applying the promotion. And this service uses Silad as the source of truth. Another example on uh, how our internal customers uses the interface to create or schedule the jobs, which eventually gets processed by Spark and writes it to Scylla. And there would be a lot of other Grab services who would directly talk to our service for the use cases that um, we were discussing previously. Optimizations. Few months after we migrated from Cassandra, we started to see latencies increasing for subset of the request. And upon troubleshooting, it was found that there was this Datadog agent process running on shard zero, impacting all the requests that were responsible to be served from the same shard. And what we did was to get rid of the agent, which was creating CPU hogging on every Scylla instance, um, and instead use Prometheus from Scylla monitoring server and export all the metrics to Datadog. And the results were impressive, uh, especially with uh, read latencies going all the way to 25 millisecond and error rate to zero. Cost savings. Few initiatives that we took to reduce the cost or to introduce TTL with some default expiry. So every segment gets deleted, majority of the segments gets deleted after the TTL expiry. And for non-critical use cases, we we define rate limiters for writes and reads based on the desired QPS so as to not overload the database. Also upgraded to new storage format, which is not a default setting in Scylla Enterprise and delete the segments that are no longer used. And doing all these actions actually helped us save and reduce the uh, cluster size and storage size by more than 50%. We have a use case that frequently refresh the segment, which creates tombstones. And what we created was a schedule major compaction to evict all the expired tombstones and improve the latencies. And large partitions. We do dynamically create the partitions based on the size of the segments because some of our segments are like really huge, like with millions of passengers in one segment, we did not want to create large partitions. So this logic has been helping us so far with distributing the data across the clusters by dynamically creating the partitions. That's all we have. Uh, thank you, everyone.